In my recent but very pervasive fascination with adjustable low waist garments, I've gotten this intense urge to make a simple circle-like skirt with a wide placket for adjustability. Spoiler alert, my little placket idea didn't quite work and there are some geometrical challenges I should have foreseen that ended up making this not an adjustable skirt, but we shall make a skirt today nevertheless. As is becoming my method, I am basing my pattern off 2 meters of 140 centimeters or 55 inches wide fabric. One day, perhaps I should go a little mad and try making another low waist skirt but with significantly more fabric and panels, but today is not that day. Because of previous skirt shenanigans, I know that I really like my skirts to have ample space between the ground and the hem, yet still be long and cozy. For me, that equates to a skirt roughly 80 cm in front and 90 cm in the back, so to make sure I have enough seam allowance for hem and waistband, I am planning them out at 85 and 95 cm respectively. Next, I take my waist measure, divide it by 4 and mark that plus seam allowance to the center point of both panels. That quarter waist measurement is then halved again, and this becomes my reference point for the half panels on either side that will, conveniently, have a seam perfectly placed for a pocket. I am going to mark out the hemline from the get-go, and just let by a stretch do as it pleases. I draw a line diagonally between the waist measurements and mark out for the front part, the 85 cm line, to which we add a curve. The same is done for the 95 cm long back panels, except the two side back panels are reduced to 85 cm along the straight grain to match up with the front side panels. With this reduced length, we've used less than our 2 meter fabric allowance and have ample space on top to add a waistband, which could also be planned into the side of our panels for even more fabric saving fun. This plus all the curved pieces taken out to make up the hem gives us plenty of fabric for pocket facings and plackets. Incidentally, since I planned things to be symmetrical, I can cut everything on the fold. Plan in hand, I could make quick work of cutting my pieces out of this dark grey mottled wool that you will recognize if you spend any amount of time on this channel since I am so so very fond of it and how versatile it is. Plus it's black or at least a very near relative. I start off by sewing all three front pieces together since they will have nothing fancy going on and this will help me remember which pieces are which. Next up, pockets. I thought I'd try aligning the edge of my pockets with my skirt fabric this time. This piece is 8 inches long or about 20 centimeters. I folded my pocket fabric twice so that I have four layers of fabric and drew up a nice roomy pocket. I am just stitching the facing on top of the pocket pieces since this fabric is lightly felted and won't fray. I would fold up the edges or do some other edge finishing if I had a fray prone fabric, though this does add some bulk. And obviously we remember that pocket pieces are sewn mirrored together, so your facing pieces can't all be on the same side, right? I know many historical pockets are not actually finished, but the French seam we employed in the previous skirt experiment was such a success, I am employing it here as well. It doesn't take me that long to stitch up my seam, insides facing out, trim the seam allowance down, and then flip it so the insides face in, before stitching the seam allowance inside itself. To increase hand to pocket fit, I am first sewing up the top 5 cm or 2 inches of my side panel before pinning in my pocket. Right. Excuse me. 
you could do this part by machine if you want, but I've found that I need to go over the top and bottom by hand anyway, as my machine won't get into all the nooks and crannies without making a mess of things. So usually I just stitch the whole thing in by hand with a backstitch and strong silk thread. I also sew up at least an inch of skirt seam underneath the pocket to make it easier when I do do the rest by machine. Now for the placket, which needs a good press before proceeding. So a good incentive to press everything else we've done thus far as well. I won't talk too much about this placket insertion since I just ended up taking it out again, but it is basically just stitched, flipped and stitched again with the other seam allowance tucked in. Much like the waistband, which I get to next. This is pinned to the right side of the skirt, sewed all the way around, before I realized that it was too wide and cut off about half. This is the point where I find it easiest to sew up the ends of my waistband. I know you can do it before, but I confuse myself and end up with the raw edges facing out, so... And then we just fold it back in on itself and stitch the other side by hand with neat hemming stitches. If you make sure to stitch above the first seam line, your stitches will not show to the front of the skirt. In my fit of productive enthusiasm, I even went so far as to attach my lovely metal buttons and accompanying button loops to my skirt before trying it on. And realizing that bias on bias closures are a bad idea and will hang all sorts of funky. My error finally realized there was nothing else to do but to carefully undo buttons, waistband and placket before sewing up the side seam where the placket had been so it wouldn't misbehave again. This was also the point at which I wanted the skirt to be done rather than adjustable, so opted for a regular placket rather than my adjustable experiment, which had issues regarding length of seams and geometry that I needed to address further anyway. With both my straight grain seams on the side and with pockets, I decided to cut an 8 inch slit in the center back. Because I am my stubborn self, I then recycled my placket and some other pieces into a more than 16 inches long, 4 inches wide regular placket, which is sewn as close to the edge of the slit as the frayability of your fabric will allow. Much like or should I say exactly like a waistband, this is then folded over, except here you try to keep as much of your placket fabric above the skirt slit as possible, or you will end up with a very narrow and not at all useful placket friend. I forgot to film this part, but we then press and stitch our placket to whichever side we prefer, details of which are better illustrated in my Victorian sleeve protectors video. Placket shenanigans dealt with, we can then reattach the waistband, followed by a singular enchanting metal button this time, as well as a singular button loop of appropriate size. Button loops are just a series of long stitches held together by buttonhole stitches. Thicker thread is definitely recommended for this, or you will spend forever making them, but I really like them because, unlike buttonholes, they are entirely reversible. With a narrower placket and no pleats, I definitely saw the need to add hooks and eyes down the side of my placket to keep everything nice and respectable. I like to stitch everything way up, especially the eyes, so that they're almost too stitched up for the hook to fit through. I find this drastically reduces the chance that they will randomly pop open as you go about your day. Closures and waistband mistakes corrected, we then turn our attention to the hem. Like I discovered with the previous skirt, I am enjoying the look of linen ribbon inside the hem, so I'm employing the same treatment here. Only I've now realized that the bottom seam can totally be done by machine before folding it up and stitching the top by hand.
And with that final bit of pressing, our new skirt friend is complete. I feel like I say this about most of my skirts, but I really love this one. The drape and swoosh looks great, the pockets are placed exactly where my hands look for them, and the placket turned out better than I could have ever hoped for while I was seam ripping out all the top finishings. Was this supposed to be a quick, one day project that ended up being anything but? Yes. But we finished it, and it legit might be all I will choose to wear until warmer weather forces me to make a similar one that is... not wool, or at least much lighter. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little bumpy adventure, and I look forward to seeing you for some hopefully more straightforward shenanigans in future 